Well, good morning, everybody. I hope you're doing well today. And again, I want to thank you for joining me this morning because, you know, I'm sure you could be doing a hundred different other things this morning other than spending a few minutes online with me today. So I want to thank you if you're joining us on, you know, our Facebook live broadcast or later on on YouTube or uh, on the Tough Questions for God.org website. Wherever you're joining us or, or experiencing this ministry, I just want to thank you for what you're doing. I want to open this morning with a, with a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for the tremendous blessings that you pour out on us. And we thank you that this morning we can join together in Christian unity to talk about you, to, to look at your word, and to just to consider all that you have planned for each one of us, regardless of where we are in the world. So it's in the name of Jesus that we invite you in to this worship this morning. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Again, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate you being here. We've been on a journey here recently um, on a new series that's titled, What's the Point? And I've explained in the past, it really is a series that's designed to help us to understand what the major point of each one of the books of the Bible is all about. And we're starting in the New Testament because I think that if we understand the main points of what the New Testament is striving to tell us, it really will help us understand some of the difficult past uh, scriptures and books uh, in the Old Testament because we understand what the complete story is, you know, because we're viewing things, you know, from thousands of years later. Today we're going to take a look at the book of Acts. And Acts is a book that was written by the disciple Luke. Uh, it's believed to be his second writing. And the book of Acts deals with the spiritual aspect of the ministry that Jesus started here on the earth. It really doesn't deal with or not, not meant to solely deal with, you know, the events, you know, or the activities that took place. You know, Acts is kind of a spiritual description of the GPS that the disciples and the early church leaders and early believers uh, kind of followed in their life, especially during times that were tremendous. They were under tremendous persecution. And this book of Acts describes how the Holy Spirit of God led them in the building and in the establishment of the early church. Now, one of the things we all do is we read about and study the life of Jesus. We read about how Jesus spent time, you know, alone. He, was, he spent a lot of time in solitude. He spent time in prayer. He, we, he spent, you know, what, 40 days in the desert. Um, he would go away periodically to be alone with his thoughts and with God and with the Spirit of God. You see, Jesus was was yearning for the Spirit of God in his life to, to con finish convicting him of all of the different aspects of this ministry he was doing here on the earth and to lead him and guide him in all of those different pursuits. So Jesus spent a lot of time searching out and communing with the Spirit of God. Remember when Jesus was in the desert? You know, he went off in the desert and you know, he was hungry and he was without shelter and all of these things as a, as a way to open his heart to the leading of God's spirit in his life. That's why he spent hours upon hours in prayer, uh, listening to the spirit, searching for the spirit to continually lead him and guide him. Even in the Garden of Gethsemane, you know, we all are familiar with that night when Jesus was betrayed before this mock a trial that was going to condemn him to be crucified. You know, that night in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus really affirmed the Holy Spirit's activities or, or actions in his life being the motivation behind what he was doing. And Jesus found himself during that time period in the Garden. He was unable to turn away from the horrors that he knew he was getting ready to face on the cross and the crucifixion and so forth. And he was, he was absolutely just convinced he was, he was empowered by the Spirit of God to continue on this journey. 
uh, to pay for the sins of humankind. So to look at the book of Acts as simply a calendar of events that took place, you really miss a lot of what the book, you know, opens up for us, what it talks about and and how the the spirit of God infused into the life of Jesus and led him accordingly into all the different things that he did and different ministries. There's a, a special, there's two verses I want to share with you today, and let me put one of them up on the screen for you. And here's what it says. It says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You see, this was the beginning of a new era in the relationship that God had with humankind. Even though Jesus was physically gone at this point in his ministry, you know, the Holy Spirit that guided him, Jesus tells us in the book of Acts that it will guide you too. And the Father was leaving the Holy Spirit in the world to guide and to lead all of these believers and followers of Jesus. Now, when Jesus was leaving this world, it really was quite shocking. You know, people really weren't expecting it. It was totally unexpected, you know, that these newfound followers of what they called the way uh, would all of a sudden be faced with their leader, their guide, their, their Messiah, all of a sudden ending up on a cross and then reappearing after his death and saying, I'm leaving, I'm going to heaven. So, but the Holy Spirit will be with you. I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine what they must have been going through? You know, they were having a hard enough time understanding the mission of God through Jesus here on the earth. And yet all of a sudden he dies and he comes back and he says, you know, I'm not going to be with you anymore, but the Holy Spirit will be. I mean, their minds had to be blown. You know, all of a sudden they're like, Jesus, we've had a hard enough time understanding you, much less now understanding this Holy Spirit that we can't see, we can't feel, we can't touch. I mean, they were constantly being thrown all of these new ideas and concepts, things that they needed to learn. But Jesus was sharing with them during this book, in this book, that it's the Spirit of God that had led him you know, into the world that led him throughout his ministry in the world and that really led him to the cross to pay the sacrifice, to pay the ransom uh, for humankind due to our sinful nature. I can't imagine what it must have been like for them. You know, all of a sudden Jesus is here and he says, but I'm here, but, but I'm leaving, so good luck. Well, why did God leave us with the Holy Spirit? Part of the answer is because it's the Holy Spirit of God that reveals things to us, that changes our hearts, our human hearts and understanding into things that resemble the understanding and the mission and the, and the personhood of who God is. You know, as we face our Christian journeys here in this life, everything is not always understandable, not always likable, not always even feasible. And sometimes we struggle with what God is doing and what God is allowing in the world. Why? Well, because we don't understand it all. We, we, we wonder things like if, if Jesus paid the sacrifice for the ransom of humankind, why did he have to leave? You know, why didn't he just stay here with us? Or the night in, gar- in the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus said, Father, if there's another way to do this, all all things are possible for you. Let's do it some other way. Why didn't God do that? Why did God hold steady and hold fast to, I'm sorry, Jesus, but you got to go to the cross. Why did Jesus have to leave? Why didn't he stay? Why did he come back during the times of Roman occupation? Why not? Why didn't he come in, you know, to the scene during the times when Israel was struggling in Egypt? Why did God allow the suffering and the deaths of hundreds of thousands of martyrs over the centuries? Why does God allow this world to be so messed up? Why, Why am I struggling through life in this physical world myself? Didn't Jesus pay the price for everybody? And 
doesn't that mean that I've been forgiven and I can be ushered into the kingdom of heaven? You know, all of these different things lead us to a point to where we're not quite sure sometimes of what's going on. And in the book of Acts, Jesus tells us, it's the Spirit of God who has led me through my ministry and that is leading me now. And the Spirit of God is going to be left and present in the world. But it is, it is absolutely a free will choice. So if you open your heart to the Spirit of God, then it will come in and it will convict you. It will lead you. It will guide you. It will help you in this aspect of your faith in what God is doing. Because we can come up with, you know, hundreds of questions like some of the ones I just mentioned. But it is when we have tremendous faith in God and what God's plan is and who God is and what God is doing in the world and what he's doing through people, why he allows suffering and, and all of the things that he allows. It's when we have faith in him that all of this starts to come together and and hold us together in one piece so we don't unravel. You know, it's the Spirit of God that really fulfills our destiny. You, It's free will. You have to allow the Spirit of God in your life to come into your heart and to change the person that you are. Now, I've told you all before, you know, I'm not the same person I was 10 years or 20 years ago. I'm not. I'm a different person. I have different thoughts and different priorities and and I think of things differently and and things have different meanings in my life today than they did you know 20 years ago and and I do things differently my goals are different I mean I'm not the same person that I was you know many many years ago why it's because the spirit of God I've allowed the spirit of God to come into my heart and I've given him free will God whatever you choose to do in my life please go ahead and do it because ultimately I realize that my hope and my salvation and my future is in you. I mean, that's the bottom line. It's in him. There's another scripture let me put up here on the screen for you. And this one says, and this is from Acts, the second chapter, verse 42. And it says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. You know, these four things are what they were doing during their times of trouble and anticipation and ugliness. When the Spirit comes upon somebody, it changes who that person is. It changes their heart and their yearnings and their desires. It changes their whole thought process. You see, The Spirit of God in a believer becomes the foundation of how that person lives. And we see that as evidence in the life of Jesus, who, remember, was fully human, yet fully God. But as a human being, he needed the Spirit of God to lead him and guide him, and he needed to trust in that Spirit of God. So Jesus understood fully what it is that he's called us to do today, and that is to trust and to allow our hearts to accept the counsel of God through the Spirit of God inside of each and every one of us. You know, the main theme of the book of Acts, as you get into it and you read it, is that God has given to the church and to all of us, you know, and the early believers and all of the believers today. God has given to us his Spirit to lead and guide us, to change us, and to make us resemble more and more the image of his son, Jesus Christ, who came into the world to satisfy the demands of a holy and perfect God and to redeem the people that he created, if we will allow him to do that. And we learn and we receive faith as a gift from God through the Holy Spirit. But again, that choice is just that. It's a free will choice. Friends, I hope and pray that you will consider these things uh, throughout the week as we continue on this journey of faith for each one of us. Uh, If you have joined us from afar, hey, check out the toughquestionsforgod.org website. A lot of different resources there. And I'll look forward to seeing each of you next week. Thanks 
and God bless. Tough Questions for God is a teaching ministry of the Rosebush United Methodist Church, where we challenge our faith with some of the most difficult issues. Tough Questions for God is available on Facebook Live Sundays at 11.30 a.m. or go on our website at toughquestionsforgod.org and just follow the links on the homepage for YouTube or via podcast. Thanks for joining and don't forget to like and share. God bless.